Welcome to Worth Reviewing, and this is a Kia Picanto. Now, in the UK, I feel that people still think of Kias as cheap, plasticky, and boring cars. But they really aren't. Before I carry on with this review, if you'd like to follow me on my social media for the latest car news, or subscribe to me for the latest car reviews, then please feel free. Links are in the description down below. Now, let's get reviewing. If you're looking at buying a city car, you want it to be affordable. Well, the Picanto starts at just over £10,000 for the trim level called One. It then works its way up to the highest trim level possible and with all optional extra features added, finishes around £17,500. So it's fairly well priced. The next thing you'll be looking for is the reliability. Now, I don't actually own this car, so it's unfair for me to say how reliable this car is but I will tell you it does come with seven years warranty or 100,000 miles warranty, whichever comes first. Now only a few other manufacturers in the world had this long-term warranty for a new car. And even though it's a city car, you still want the ride to be enjoyable. Well, good news for you. I can tell you this car is the best city car or even best small car I've driven ever. Honestly, much, much better than the 3500 I reviewed every week. And that was a good little car. The steering is nice and light, great for going around corners, but also great for parking, which I shall now demonstrate. I'm now gonna park this car in between them two cars. Now, none of this is set up at all. The only thing I've done is put the camera to where it is, so you have a rough guide of how well uh, my parking is, or how good my parking skills are, or what ultimate parking skills are. I try and do this just in the one, rather than drive again, like drive forward if I can. The steering is dead easy, nice and light, which is what you want. Oh, how close am I getting? Let's do it for just get neat up a bit. So, there we are, it's parked neatly right in front of someone's driveway, but it's okay, I'll move. So, you want a small city car to somehow be practical? Well, let's have a look. As you'd expect from a city car, the boot size space in the back isn't big, but it's expected. In the back of the Picanto, we have 255 litres with the seats folded up and just over a thousand litres with the rear seats folded down. Which means you can fit 74 six pint milk bottles in the boot with the rear seats folded up and 296 six pint milk bottles with the rear seats folded down. Handy to know if you're low on milk. Now let's check out the back seats. I've got to say, it's fairly roomy in here for a city car. It's stylish and pretty comfortable too. I've got electric windows, although that's probably due to the fact that this is quite a high spec trim level. And I've also got three seat belts and of course three seats. Now most of this car's rivals, such as the Volkswagen Up, only have two seat belts in the back and maybe three seats. So meaning you can fit another person in the back of this car. Now let's check out the front. In the front, it's pretty smart looking for a city car. I say smart, pretty sporty looking as well. We've got nice black and red seats, which look pretty wicked, I've got to say. We then got some nice red stitching along this armrest here, the gear gator, the steering wheel, and along the door trim. We've then got some storage space down there next to the handbrake. We then got some more storage space up here, and in front of that, we've then got some places to put our cup holders or cup holder. As you'll see, this is a two litre bottle of Tesco's Lemonade. Oh yeah. We're going to put that into its place and press these two buttons either side, which should now lock this thing into, maybe it doesn't lock it into place, but still it sort of holds it into place. If you can have a passenger, get her or him to hold it like so. And then even so a Red Bull can fits in there pretty snug as well, say pretty snug. It doesn't fall over like this one did. And this one fits in there like more snug. In front of that, we've then got the USB 12 volt power socket and auxiliary input as well. And there's another little shelf storage at the top of that. We've then got the climate control system with aircon, which is fine to use. And at the top here, we've then got the seven inch infotainment system, which for a city car, I've got to say, it is literally 10 out of 10, bang on, perfect. It's not laggy at all, it's easy to use. It's got DAB, it's got Bluetooth, it's got FM radio, not that we use it anymore. It's got Android Auto, it's got Apple CarPlay, as every system now does. But the thing I like about this system 
is that they've kept the controls down to the side, still buttons, not icons, and I like that because sometimes it's so much easier to press a button than trying to find the icon to touch and then we then press the wrong thing it then sends a missile somewhere. Um, but I like that. We then got the driving control buttons down here. TPMS, which is tire pressure monitoring system. Traction throw off if you're in a hoon about. And headlamp level adjustment. And we then got some electric windows, obviously for the back as you've just seen, but the front as well, so you can control the front and the rear, which is quite good for a city car. Central locking, and you can also put the windows in like you can see. And out again, I can see myself now. And finally, the glove box. <laughs> Let's go for another drive. The Bicanto is available in a few petrol engines, including a one litre, 66 brake horsepower, a one litre turbo, 99 brake horsepower, and this one, the 1.25, 83 brake horsepower, giving it a 0 to 60 time in 11.6 seconds, a top speed of 107 miles an hour, and you'll achieve around 50 miles per gallon. So, which engine should you go for? For me personally, it would either be this one, or the one litre turbocharged, simply as a prefer a car with a bit more power. But you don't necessarily need that in a city car. If you're just doing city driving around town, then maybe the 60 seat brake horsepower version is the one for you. But it might also seem sluggish when you do want to put your foot down. But, put my foot down on this car. It has got some poke, you know. I never would have thought. I do heel and toe as well. I never would have thought I can enjoy a city car as much as this. Get some air. I mean, no, I know it's not built for driving around these sort of roads and hooning around the corners, but let's be honest here, everyone does it once in a while. But to be honest with you, I actually generally love this car. It's a cracker. So what's my verdict here? Is it worth reviewing? Yes. And should you buy one? Well, put it this way, if I lived in a more urban area, I would definitely consider buying one of these cars. I mean, come on, just look at it. It's the best looking city car there is out there. And even when I show my parents around the car, they liked it, they liked the sportiness look, and they're all over 50. So it's not just a case of this sportiness look is just for the younger generation, it's for the older generation as well. And even the name, Kia Picanto. Kia Picanto, cracking name for a cracking car. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my review. If you want to see my reviews in the past, click over here or over here. Or if you'd like to subscribe to me for future content, click up here. Thank you very much for watching.